Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and this is me playing Bioshock Infinite on Ultra settings on my iMac with a PlayStation 4 controller. So, uh, yeah, let's see how this is all put together. Now, to be honest, guys, this is a lot easier than it looks. All you want to do is head over to your browser of choice and search for GeForce Now for Mac, and then click on the top link on the results. Now, once you're in, you're going to see that it's going to bring up a page by NVIDIA and GeForce for a brand new service that they've got out, which is GeForce Now, which is available in North America and also Europe, and it's available for Mac, which means you can play ultra high resolution games on any Mac computer, as long as it's relatively new, you're talking around 2013 onwards. And once you've got everything loaded, you're going to be granted with the games. So you've got some brand new titles like Call of Duty World War 2, Wolfenstein 2, Destiny 2, Overwatch, Fortnite, Counter-Strike, and a bunch of other games that are available, and you're bound to find some that you're going to really enjoy playing. Now you've got some older titles as well, like Half-Life 2 for example, and the original Portal, and then you've got games that have only just come out, like I mentioned with Call of Duty World War 2, coming out this month. So it's right up to date in terms of what you can play, but if you do want to go ahead and play one of the classic you've got the option to do so. Now as this is still in beta at the moment it is currently a free service however eventually it will be a paid monthly subscription but I can't imagine it being all that much. Now for me I'm going to use Half-Life 2 as an example as this is one that I've already got within my Steam library. So once you click on the game it's then going to basically emulate Steam on the machine that you're going to be using. So for me once I've logged in you'll see that it's going to basically put a new window within your Mac that is going to be Steam and then it's going to load straight into the game. Now this process is extremely extremely easy and very quick to do and you're going to be playing games within around 30 seconds as it says on the GeForce website and that actually holds true. Getting into a game, playing it, loading up a save game or whatever you need to do is all done extremely fast. So if I just click into a new game on Half-Life 2 and choose a level that I want to do, you can see here that it's going to load in around 5 seconds and everything is up and running and then you can play the game straight away. So in terms of the ease of actually playing games, it is very simple to do so and that's mainly because nothing is actually running off of your machine. The way to think of it is Netflix, obviously you're streaming something from somewhere else to get the picture then on your TV. This is basically doing the same sort of thing. You're using all of Nvidia's and GeForce's servers and really high powered machines way in a different country and then it's basically streaming that image to your monitor of choice, in my case my iMac. Now what that allows you to do is play games like this on older machines or lower powered machines like the 12 inch MacBook for example or a MacBook Air to get the same sort of quality which is really awesome. Now it's not necessarily as simple as just loading up a game and playing. So for example with Overwatch, because that's not available on Steam and it's not really done through Steam, it's done through Battle.net, which is by Blizzard. As you can see here, you need to actually log into your Battle.net account, which again is slightly different to your Steam account. Now for me, as you can see here, because I'm running on a Mac, it actually loads up a preview of Internet Explorer from Windows. Now this isn't just to log in, you can use this as a full-fledged browser if you really want to. So just as a very quick example, I'm just going to go to YouTube and load up the Thor Ragnarok trailer and as you can see here it loads and plays perfectly fine. So it's kind of strange to be able to have Internet Explorer kind of integrated within a Mac as you can see without having to sideload anything but again if that's the way they want to do it then that's the way they want to do it. So it doesn't really affect anything you can't really use it for anything else other than the Internet Explorer itself and again it's not the best experience so yeah, I only really use it for the login purposes that it's actually meant for. So once you've entered your password and you've got everything all set up, it's then going to take you to the Overwatch page, which again is done through Blizzard and Battle.net. And once you're in and you've got everything loaded, it looks exactly like it would on any other machine. You've got access to games, social, shop, and also news. So again, if you did want to go ahead and purchase one of these games through the store, then you've definitely got the option to do so. So if I click on to Overwatch, go down to the $29.99 standard version, as you can see here, you can then purchase the game within this system as well. So it's all integrated really nicely because if I try to click on play as you can see here I don't currently have Overwatch, I don't have in any Steam library, Battlewatch, anything like that at all so the game isn't going to load and I'm going to have to purchase it. But again once that's done or if you've got an older Steam library with all these games on it and you want to transfer over from a PC to a Mac for any reason then you've got the option to do so with this new system. 
There are also some free-to-play titles, so Fortnite Battle Royale, which is something that I've been playing a ton on my PlayStation 4, is available for free using this service as well, again being in early access. So once you've got access to it, you will need to log in using your Epic Games login. So, you know, as you can see here, we've got a load of different logins that we need. Now, for some reason, the Fortnite servers were down at the time of me filming this video. However, since then, I've been able to play the game perfectly fine without any problems whatsoever. And again, graphics, frame rate, and overall fidelity of the game is unhindered by streaming anything online. Now with an online game you don't really want to have any lag or any problems and I can definitely say that that's not the case with using GeForce Now. But how do the actual games themselves play? Well, as you can see here, I've loaded up Bioshock Infinite and the graphics options, everything is set on ultra and everything is set on high. So again, the game looks incredible and this is gonna be across the board. Now you will need to have a really good internet connection to actually use this service. So for me, I'm getting around 70 megabytes down here at the moment. And again, there's no issues whatsoever. Now again, I wouldn't recommend using it on a trackpad and a keyboard. So if you are using it on a MacBook or a MacBook Air, for example, then I would recommend getting an external mouse. So I'm using my MX Master from Logitech and I'm just using the Apple keyboard that came with the computer itself. So again, you get a little bit of a better gaming experience as opposed to being cramped around the trackpad. Now, once I was done testing, I did actually go ahead and download Overwatch to see exactly how it was gonna look on this service. Now, the great thing that I love is in the top left-hand corner, there was also a frames per second counter with Overwatch, and I was constantly getting 60 frames a second with everything on the best settings available, which was basically Ultra. Now, that's better than some gaming PCs get, so you can definitely see that you need a really great internet connection to get the most out of this service. So if you've got anything around 30 megabytes a second or below, I wouldn't even bother trying because it's probably not going to run to the satisfaction that you'd want. Now you can also use a controller, so in my case I've got here my PlayStation 4 controller just plugged into the back of the iMac as you can see here, and it works extremely well. Now the game itself does think that it's an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller, but that doesn't make too much difference, it works extremely fine, I've got no issues whatsoever, and there isn't any lag whatsoever as well, because again there's nothing to do with input lag as it all comes from the server as well, so it's all dependent on your internet connection. Now you can also go through and change any settings that you need to do, whether that's controller settings or also graphic settings as well so you've got the option to play around and get the optimal experience for your internet connection or whatever peripheral you're going to be using. And the great thing with the controller is there's no drivers to install, there's nothing separate that you need to install to get access to this, you just plug in and play and you're ready to go. For me, all I've done was just move my mouse and keyboard to the side, plug in my controller, and it worked perfectly fine first time. Now I did have to adjust the sensitivity and things, but you have to do that most of the time anyway, dependent on the game you're playing, but it worked fine, no problems whatsoever, and it's a really great experience, I just wish the Bluetooth worked. Now the main question that I've been asking myself is am I going to be using this over a dedicated games console or a dedicated gaming PC? Well, not necessarily for all gaming. However, when you take into account how seamlessly this works and how great the experience is, it's definitely worth something to think about. Now, I would also take into account the price of games. Steam and PC games are always cheaper than what they are on consoles. So for instance, at the moment on Steam, Call of Duty World War II is around $44.99 here in the UK. Whereas if you wanna get that exact same game on the PlayStation 4, you're looking at $54.99, which is definitely a difference in price. So yes, it's a great experience, but I wouldn't necessarily use it for full-time gaming. But if you do wanna just pick up and play, or if you wanna get into gaming on a Mac, this is kind of the only way to do it. And that is gonna do it guys for this video. Now everything is gonna be linked in the description down below. So if you want to try this out for yourself, then you've got the option there to do so. And if you've got any questions or comments, let me know on Twitter at Copper versus Glass or down in the comments section down below. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And for more great content in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Now I have only recently moved and I am getting over the flu. So I'm gonna be bringing you a lot more videos ever so shortly after my little break that I've had for around a week or so. So definitely look out for that. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.